Hello everyone, welcome to another Tips and Tricks video. My name is Dan Lopez and I'm the Tecla PowerFab Application Specialist. Uh, we recently released an EPM Go the shipping calendar and actually our global team made a video about it. Uh, I will make sure to include the link to that video in this video's description for your reference in case you haven't seen it. So I think it does make a lot of sense to give you a few tips or lessons of how you can plan your loads in Tecla EPM in a better manner as a first step. So you can start using the shipping calendar in a better way. Now, from my years in fabrication, I know that not every company plan every load for every job. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, that is usually tied to the complexity of direction and or the project being built up in a very limited space area where there is no storage available and you need to ship only what can be erected, you know, for the day or a couple of days. So. Uh, this type of planning will provide an incredible resource for those cases, uh, but also will give you the tools to start planning loads for every project, if, if, even if you don't formally create a list for every single drug in a very easy way and for several uses, like planning resources, for example, this will help your company as well. Now, let me switch the screen here to check APM. Uh, you can plan your loads way in advance. Like as soon as you get the information released for fabrication, you can start creating the, the, the plan and you can use the lot number for it or you can just select pieces from the model. Uh, a lot of companies use the lot number for that. So let me, let me explain a little bit on that. The lot number is intended to be a breakdown of your sequence, sequences. You know, a lot of people say there is, for example, in sequence one, if I uh, pull the model interface here and colorize my model uh, by sequence, and let me, you know, put two screens on my display so we can see both things. Uh, so these are my five sequences on this job, right? This one, two, three, four, and five. That seems okay. It seems like it, this is the way that I, I have to build my project. Uh, but if I want to also plan even further, I can use the load number for my loads or use, you know, as a breakdown of my sequences. If I show you here my lot number for this project, I can colorize that. And it's, it becomes basically the way that I will be releasing this to the shop and, and making sure that they fabricate the pieces in the right order, even inside of the sequence, so I can keep going with the same reader on the job side, right? They basically, it's like my plan if I go uh, seeing my lot numbers here is how my project should be uh, growing on the job side uh, based on those areas. So. Uh, just an easy way to to see that here on the screen. Uh, sometimes you get this from your detailing. Sometimes you don't. You can still assign that using Trimble Connect and Tecla APM, right? So I leave a few pieces here on the corner with no load just to do a quick example of how you can do that. If I just uh, let me uncheck everything and check those pieces that has no load assigned. You see those right there. Obviously, you can be selecting a couple of pieces if you want to break this down in two or three different loads. This is a small portion of project, so I can just select all of them, go here to my set sequences screen, and then do a selection from the model. And this will actually take not just the main marks, but also the, the right quantity that you have selected on the screen. So uh, this brings exactly what I have in there. Uh, I can go ahead and say this actually goes under the lot number. And you know, it can be pretty much anything that you like to call those things, right? I'll just go and say, this is 5D used to make reference for the sequence five, but the, the lot number D. So update this, yes. And then I have everything load. So if I just color, recolorize my uh, model interface, you will see that now this looks uh, completely breakdown in lot number. So every lot number or each one of them can be a, lo a load if you want to. Now, as I was saying, this can help you to plan way in advance, right? Because you can build this lo uh, these lot numbers as you receive the information from your detailer. If you really want to plan uh, the load, you know, a couple of days before, a few weeks before it happened, you can still, instead of create a lot number, you can either just go and make that selection of assemblies that you are trying to, to put into a truck. And remember that you, from the main display in Tecla APM, have the option to select from the model and then use the load all selected functionality. I can just go and say load all the selected ones and then just decide which load number you want to put those pieces in. And that will be building your loads in the same way that I'll show you by using the load number. So have that in mind as well. Uh, let me go ahead and minimize for now Trimble Connect and just expand this. 
So I can just start dumping my load numbers into loads. Uh, basically, if I go to the load planning or load screen, uh, here I have some loads that I have already created, but they are completely empty. I can go just here and add the material based on my load number. So if I go to the properties of this and go to the add material screen, instead of you know moving around or, or select from the model, I just go here and expand my loads and say, uh, all the load number 1A is going to be part of this load uh, at this material, and it's there. Now, one more thing that I forgot here that I, I may have skipped is when you are in the add material, you see this little box, load and assign. I didn't have that check, so that means that the material that I included into this load is not being right now loaded. It's just the plan. If you check this box, you are basically telling the system that you are putting those uh, pieces or assemblies into a truck, that it will be shipped later maybe. But what I'm doing here with that uncheck is basically creating the list for the people to follow. Uh, maybe through EPM Go, so I'll show you in a little bit. So uh, uh, you can select from, from here the planned ship date or you can do it later on the shipping calendar. It's just up to you how do you handle that. Uh, for example, I, I will go ahead and say, these have to go July 12th, right? So save this. Uh, let me go back to the next one and you say load properties. I already have the breakdown again, so it's super easy if you went ahead and plan uh, before in advance. You just go here and say my load 1B, include all of those, and that just goes here to my plan. So add this material, and again, that box is in check. So if I save this, this is just being my plan for that week. Now, let me show you how this looks in EPM Go, because that's where you will be uh, defining the date and actually putting those pieces into the truck as well. So let me just pull EPM go here in my screen real quick. And when I go to the shipping status screen and open the job site and ask to the software to show me all the ship loads, uh, then I have every single load that I have created in here. When I go, for example, to the load number one, that was the first one that I planned and click on material. You can see that here it's putting the list that my guys will be uh, putting into the truck. As soon as they start loading this, uh, their status will be changing for those assemblies, right? Like I can go just here and say load this piece, one out of one, uh, load this assembly, and that's up in the truck. So as they can do this in real time, and all this is feeding the information back into Trimble Connect, as I'll show you in a bit. Uh, now, one more thing here, if, if I go to my general dashboard, just to show you real quick uh, into my calendar. And let me just go ahead and show this by week and go to the week where I started planning, which is uh, this one here. On the screen here, I have the load number one that I specified to be uh, planned for July 12th. And you can see that it's at 5% pretty much of completion because uh, it's the one that I just put one assembly on board, the B23, it's right there as done. Any of the other assemblies from this screen, you can check you know, the details of where they are in the shop at this moment in time. Uh, for the load number two that I actually didn't specify the day, they can just go back and do it on EPM, or I can from here use drag and drop or select the day directly. Uh, let me just go ahead and, and lead, put my list of not planned loads. The number two is right here. And I can either, as I was saying, drag and drop or use from here, click schedule and select the actual date that you want to use. I'll go and say this is for day 13, and then that load goes into my screen. Uh, this right here is right now colorized by status, but if I want to make sure that I wasn't using the same trailer, I can colorize that and make sure that in that way, when I'm planning my loads, uh, either by drag and dropping or selecting the date, I am not planning to use the same trailer the same day, right? Because that wouldn't be possible. Now, those status, if I go to back to EPM, and pull my model interface here into my screen. Uh, let me use colorize by the shipping status. And this will actually tell me exactly what's been not even started, what's been assigned into a load, which means you already planned for it, and what it's actually already on a truck, even though it's not shipped. So if I pull Trimble Connect here into my screen, you will see how that's represented in my model here as well. I hope this helps you to start planning your loads. It's a quick process. Uh, don't be afraid of doing so. If you need any help, contact Help Desk. We are always available for you. And as always, thank you for watching.